Welcome to Direct Talk, interviews with leaders, visionaries, and pioneers who are shaping Asia and the rest of the world. Our guest today is Masanao Kurata, president of Bunako, a small woodworking company in Aomori Prefecture in northeastern Japan. Bunako specializes in beechwood crafts. At the 34th G8 Summit held in Hokkaido in 2008, its fine woodware was given as a gift to the leaders in attendance. One of its signature products is a lampshade highly regarded for its refined design. The fixtures can be currently found in Indonesia and France. We asked Kurata about how his small 27-person company made an international name for itself. We use a material called beach, so it's all about whether the beach would be happy with how it's being used. Trees are living things, so it has its own nature. You don't want to force the beach to do anything unnatural. At the same time, you want to express its intrinsic beauty. That's how you end up with something special. So our job is to approach the beach face to face and figure out just how far we can go. We have to thoroughly understand it. The village of Nishimeya in Aomori Prefecture. Bunako is nestled in the abundant nature of Shirakami Sanchi, a World Heritage Site. The mountainous area includes an old-growth forest of Japanese beach. The company's products are immediately eye-catching for their unorthodox design. Layers upon layers of thin strips of beach are aligned and combined to create a distinct form. Take these lampshades. They appear unremarkable at first glance. Flip the switch, however, and the translucent areas light up red, creating a gradation of color. This light, called Bunako Red, is easy on the eyes, a non-fatiguing light that has a soothing effect on the viewer. The lampshades are used in the interiors of places like this, Japan's top-of-the-line sleeper train, Shikishima. Or take these speakers, one of the company's popular products. The subtly textured veneer and special shape are set to draw out high quality sound. The defining trait of Bunako's wares is that all of the products are made using beech. But for a long time, beech was long seen as a material with little utility value. When you have beech trees planted in the mountains, they drink lots of water. What that means is that the trees soak up a lot of the rainwater that falls in the mountains, which in turn means you don't get flooding. They serve many purposes. But as a material, its properties were long seen as weaknesses. If all that water isn't properly drained, the wood could eventually warp or split. So in that respect, beech trees have been considered as having low value. Hmm, beech. It's a tree that's always given pause. What we do at Bunako, our skills were cultivated with the purpose of giving that beech a large amount of value added, turning it into something that could be sold. Their craft was inspired by the properties of the beech trees cultivated in Shirakami Sanchi. In winter, the region gets about five meters of snow and is beset by sweeping winds. The beech trees are able to persist in this harsh environment because of their natural flexibility and resilience, an ability to spring back into shape which allows them to bear the weight of the heavy snow and winds. The company took notice of its properties and developed an original manufacturing process. Its method involves slicing the wood into thin strips like this, roughly one millimeter thick. Beech is resilient and doesn't break even when bent. Layers and layers of the strips are coiled around a base, creating a disc-like plate that resembles a Baumkuchen, a ring-shaped German layer cake. Next, the strips of beech are gradually offset by hand. The plates can be transformed into many shapes. This manufacturing process creates hardly any waste, 
and uses up one-tenth the amount of material you would need to carve out similar wares. The approach is eco-friendly. The only drawback? These crucial steps cannot be done by machine. We use natural materials, and that means all of the materials that come to our factory have varying properties. They're just like human beings. Some trees are more resilient, some are more fragile. That makes it difficult to make these products using machines. You have to make small adjustments. When you're dealing with materials that each have their own distinct properties, humans adapt very well. You can tell by feel if the beach you're coiling is hard or soft, you subconsciously apply more pressure or less pressure, depending. Human beings are quite something in that regard. So I resolved that we should apply that fantastic human ability in our craft. And I haven't thought about mechanization since. Bunako's techniques originated in 1956. An industrial research institute in Aomori had successfully developed a way to process beach. Wanting to make full use of that process, Kurata's father, Takeru, founded a company making plates and vessels. Its products became a hit at locations like department stores in Tokyo for their innovative, eye-catching design. That, in turn, bolstered the company's local economy. Kurata, the eldest son of his family, succeeded his father as president in 1992. The economic bubble had just burst in Japan, and many companies were in dire straits. Kurata developed a line of distinctive red tableware that proved to be a big hit. The series sold steadily for over five years. I got the feeling that our sales would never falter, that our sales would hold steady indefinitely. I was really full of myself at the time. I thought you had to be stupid to make a drop in sales. However, the company's fortunes would shift suddenly and unexpectedly. In March of 98, sales dropped below March of the previous year. Then the following month, it became a pattern. Sales were dropping below the previous year. They took a sudden dive, like a roller coaster. The company was unable to escape the impact of the recession. Determined to turn things around, Kurata continued to unveil new tableware in different colors and shapes. But sales continued to decline for more than two years. Then one day, he received some choice words. It was a bad time for us, truly. And one day I kind of broke down in front of my younger brother. I think the company is done for. Nothing else we can do. I've done everything I could. And I told him I figured the only thing left to do was to file for bankruptcy. And my brother just casually says, if we're at the end of the road, it's only because you've decided it is. I heard that. And I thought he had a point. I still didn't have an idea of what to do next, of course. But I resolved to break out of the doom and gloom mindset. After mulling it over, Kurata came to the conclusion that instead of doing all of the thinking alone, he should listen to the input of others. Then he remembered a certain unique order the company had received in the past. A year earlier, we'd received two separate requests to make lampshades from two people. It hit me that maybe, just maybe, 
Bunako still had a little bit of life left within it. And light fixtures could be the key. The afternoon sun pours into our factory at Hirosaki in Aomori. In the summer, it literally hits the back of the factory. And one day, we just happened to have some materials lying around, and when the afternoon sun hit it, it glowed bright red. I happened upon it as I was passing through and was struck by the beauty. I recalled that I thought to myself that we might be able to put that to use someday. In 2002, the company unveiled this lampshade. Bunako Red was born. And the company has been working to develop a range of new products ever since, such as stools and tissue boxes. To date, it has created over 400. The company has received numerous design awards both at home and abroad, and has established a name for itself internationally. The uniqueness of its products is the result of Kurata's approach to product development. A lot of people assume that I'm the one coming up with all the ideas, but actually, I've come up with none myself. Regarding design, our company will team up with anybody who wants to design. If that person's driven, it doesn't matter who it is. Some of our collaborators are world-famous designers. Others are unknowns who are still studying design at school. But if the person has the drive, we have a place for that. Really, not even I know what kind of untapped, latent potential our company still has. I have no hesitations about teaming up with anybody who can help draw out that potential. Kurata's approach has expanded the company's horizons. This speaker is a prime example. The innovative design projects sound at the ceiling, which bounces off into every direction, so that no matter where you are around the speaker, you can hear the sound in the same way. And in 2017, the company began working to build a better future. It moved its main factory into an abandoned school at the foot of Shirakami Sanji. Now, the local children can come and take tours of the factory. Kurata is looking to the future. Japan has always been a country all about making things. There are traditional crafts all across the country. Then at one point, things started becoming mechanized, and it became the norm to manufacture things in a factory. Those craft traditions were being forgotten. But now we live in an era where we're seeing a return to making things by hand. People are looking anew at the craftsmanship in these traditions. I want to encourage these young children to understand that. If I could inspire even just one or two of these kids to one day want to carry on one of these craft traditions, I think the crafts and skills will live on. And I thought this location was perfect for starting something like that. So we relocated. Never give up. Even in the most difficult of times, I didn't give up. I pressed forward. And to this day, I've made it my philosophy in life to never give up, no matter what happens. As long as you don't give up, something will come of your efforts. Maybe someone will lend you a helping hand. Eventually, you'll see a light at the end of the tunnel. So, I keep telling myself to never give up.